We said in our setup video that relationships are built upon quantities of trust, understanding, and love. We've actually talked at length about trust before, right, her, in our character development video, so just go watch that. If you've seen it, go watch it again. I had to watch it like four times just to write this, so if I have to watch it, so should you. As we've said before, character development and relationship development go hand in hand. Someone can't be characterized as shy, if there's no one to shy away from, and so on and so forth. As we talked about in the character development video, that I presume you just watched, the goal of character development is actually to build the hypothetical relationship between the character and the audience. The practical tools we use to grow that relationship are as we defined, revealing the character's motivations, watching how they respond to other characters in conflicts, and by revealing personality-defining traits and motivations through vulnerability. In the case of Carl and Ellie, we got to know them in the context of their relationship. We became close to them as they became close to each other. Relationships can be used as tools to describe to an audience who a character was versus who they've become. We know that Lightning McQueen is a jerk because of how he treats the Rusties guys, and even Mac to some extent. But through his relationship with Sally and Mater, we see who he's become. Ralph learns that getting all the accolades that Felix has isn't going to give his life purpose. Because of Vanellope, we see him discover that friendship gives him all the meaning that he needs. Us knowing Nick's character arc to the depth that we do is contingent upon he and Judy's relationship growing to the level of intimacy that it does. And for Nick to be able to reveal his backstory of being bullied, he needed to trust Judy, trust her that she wouldn't further mock or demean his experience or tell other people who didn't understand the context. Trust her that she would understand where he's coming from, why he is the way he is, his subtext. Trust is such a crazy powerful tool. Jeb and I were watching the short Frozen Fever a while back. There's this moment in that short when Elsa finally gives in. She admits to Anna, I have a cold, and then she makes this face. And at that moment, I turned to Jeb and said, whoa, Elsa has more character development in this face than the entire movie of Frozen. It's a bold claim, I know, but hang in there. After rewatching Frozen in this short a few times, I came to the conclusion in all of Frozen, Elsa doesn't listen to anybody else, she never admits she is or could be wrong, and ultimately, she never shows any signs of trusting anyone. But in this moment, in this scene, in this face, she concedes. She admits that she can't handle it all, that she was wrong, and that she trusts Anna to understand and care for her. I cared about their relationship for the first time in forever. Nice! Angry Birds is another movie where the characters' egos keep us from understanding anything substantial about them. But because of that, it made this moment stand out to me in contrast. It's this small, inconsequential moment where the yellowbird Chuck needs to warn everyone that the pigs are stealing the eggs. And when he goes up and tells the teacher, Matilda, she immediately trusts him at his word. And in that moment, I just felt that the relationship had grown much further than what I had previously understood it to be. The more characters trust each other, the closer they'll be together. And subsequently, the closer we will be to both of them. When crafting characters and the relationships they form, you need to consider that how much one character trusts another will inform how deep that relationship can go, as it does in your relationships. Your bank teller might be nice, but would you trust them to babysit your kids? You might talk to the girl next to you in class every day, but would you tell her about your dad going to prison? But you wouldn't even think twice about letting your best friend babysit your kids, and as soon as your dad was sentenced, your BFF would be the first person you'd call. These acts of trust indicate the depth of the relationship. And as your character's relationships grow, be sure to show the audience greater moments of trust between them. Because remember, we can only know your characters to the depth that they're willing to tell the other characters in the scene. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Mostly the comments is really all we care about, as we always say. Yeah, I really enjoy reading those. There was a couple really good ones. I can't remember exactly who said it, but I went to their channel and watched their videos. Yeah, I should really comment back on that. You definitely I should. That was they, it but was I really keep sick. Meaning to you, because uh, we're here any, for you. Guys. Any of you guys' comments where you're like, "Wow, Adam commented back on theirs, but not mine." It's he's working, working on it. <laughs> he's working. I'm growing as a human. Yeah, you know, it's good stuff. But it's also intentional because he's kind of a jerk. Wow. <laughs> if you want to follow me, Funstructive. Bohem, Junkers for one, and Sass's stash. Don't be, uh, don't be a trash human, and actually put effort into your relationships because they require maintenance. <laughs>